Hey YouTube, Ultra Maximus here, and I'm back with another top 10 movie list. So this is number 8 in my series. Um, we're almost done with it. I think there's about 12 total I'm going to do. So this time, I want to take a look at the top 10 westerns. Now keep in mind, if you haven't been watching this series, this is not the top 10 best westerns of all time by any you know, scientific means. It's not the highest grossing. It's not the special effects. It's not who is in it. This is my top 10 and why I think they're my top 10. So let's take a look at them. Okay, at number 10, I've got McClintock starring John Wayne. And the poster really cracks me up. It's kind of a little bondage-like, kind of like an old Wonder Woman uh, poster from the uh, 40s. Um, love this movie. This is uh, one of John Wayne's better movies, I think, personally. It's it's a bit of a comedy, but it's it's lighthearted, I think, more than it is a comedy, per se. It's loosely based on The Taming of the Shrew, set in the West, where uh, McClintock, John Wayne's character, he's just living a single life. His, his wife left him a few years ago because she thinks he's been fooling around with him. Um, he hires a widow to come in uh, to become his cook and she's got a couple kids he welcomes in, welcomes them into the home and he's dealing with this um, uh, another character who's, a, who's this this really sleazy dirty low-life bureaucrat and he's this guy's looking to try to discredit him and you know they're trying to resettle the territory and just things start happening then the ex-wife comes back and wants a divorce and it just all hell breaks loose, and it's just a really, really good uh, depiction of life on the West as far as relationships and things to that kind of nature. I think that it's something you don't see in your average Western, which is why I really liked it. I mean, obviously, it's a little uh, tongue-in-cheek in a lot of places, but it's pretty good. It's a different kind of Western, and definitely a different kind of John Wayne Western, which is why I think I like it so much. At number nine, I've got 310 to Yuma, which is the 2007 version, uh, which is a remake off of the 1957 film, which actually is a short story by, I think it was Elmer Leonard? wrote the story, I believe. Anyway, what it is, it's about, it's right after the Civil War, uh, Christian Bale's character, he's kind of a down-on-the-luck uh, cattle rancher. Um, he hooks up with Russell Crowe's character, who's an outlaw. I mean, they're biting at straws, trying to find a way to make it, make it, make it through kind of deal, and they decide that they're going to rob a stagecoach, an armored stagecoach. And they use, um, I think they use Bale's cows to stop it in, as an ambush, and, and they end up robbing it. So it's kind of one of those stories we all go through tough times throughout history. It's very cyclical. You know, times are bad. Money's hard to find. So two characters that probably wouldn't normally get together come together to try to get themselves in a better situation. Of course, I, mean, I don't know if armed robbery is the best way to go about it, but it makes for a good Western, and that's why it's number nine. At number eight, we've got Young Guns with the tagline, Six Reasons Why the West Was Wild. I love this movie. Uh, you know, we got the poster here and Mila Estevez and Keith Sutherland, Diamond Phillips, Charlie Sheen, just a great cast. And just a side note, remember, if you're collecting posters, look for those posters that have those folds in them because they didn't start folding posters till the 90s. You'll want your fold creases and original one sheets in 80s movies and beyond. But this film is fantastic. I mean, it was kind of the next generation of actors doing the next generation of Westerns with a little bit of rock and roll uh, in the soundtrack. It was fantastic. We loved it. Absolutely loved it. Um, it's about the Lincoln County War that took place in New Mexico in the uh, late 1870s and about Billy the Kid and Doc and Pat Garrett and uh, uh, Jose Chavez and, you know, all those characters coming together. And, of course, we got Young Guns 2, which was another good one. 
I'd like to see a cut with both of those kind of put together. It'd be long, though. But this is a great film, and I remember uh, there was a historian that actually said that it was one of the best um, and most historically accurate Billy the Kid films, uh, which I thought was kind of interesting. So, great film, lots of fun, uh, new generation of westerns, and that's why it's in the top ten. Number seven, the good, the bad, the ugly. When you think of spaghetti westerns, this is the film that you think of. Um, it's the third in the Dollars trilogy, the, the whole fistful of dollars and a few dollars more, and this is the third part. It takes place during the Civil War, and you know it's about Eastwood and these gunslingers trying to find a buried Confederate gold and, you know, and all the while, you get your gunfights, you get your hangings, a battle erupts, you know, there are prison camps. It just, it, he just methodically goes through these guys and just guns them down. It's, it's a Clint Eastwood Western. What more can you ask for? Number six, we've got Clint Eastwood in The Outlaw Josie Wales. Another classic Clint Eastwood flick. This is one of my more favorite westerns. I see it quite a bit on TV. It's very popular. While it's not one of the spaghetti westerns, it's definitely really damn good. It's actually based off of a book, and it was uh, selected for preservation by the National Film Registry at the Library of Congress. Uh, it's that important of a western in as far as the genres go. Basically, if you've never seen this, Josie Wales is, he's kind of bent on revenge. He's driven to revenge because his family gets killed by this pro-union guy. And uh, he, he goes on this quest to um, avenge his family's death. And, and he ends up hooking up with a bunch of oddball characters along the way. This old Indian chief who's good for comic laughs. Uh, this Indian maiden that's kind of following along. And this dog, <laughs> which is always great. He's always spitting on the dog. The dog's always coming back. And he's just an utter killing machine in this and it is awesome and that's why Clint Eastwood and Westerns are hand in hand you can't go wrong with it number five I've got Quigley Down Under this is the Tom Selleck driven Western and what I really like about this Western it's very different from the others because it takes place in Australia uh, Tom Selleck's character basically gives it up in the U.S. and decides he's going to start a cattle ranch down in Australia. So he heads down under to uh, start working on a cattle ranch and begin a new life down there. And he meets a woman, and things just kind of don't work out the way they should, as all Westerns kind of do, don't they? But it's really nice to see an American Western set in the outback of Australia, and that's what makes this very different and a very fun Western to watch. Number four, Maverick. Mel Gibson, Jodie Foster, James Garner, fantastic. The film adaptation of the old television series starring James Garner as Maverick. Well, this time around, we've got... Mel Gibson is Maverick. It's about a poker player going through the West. It's a lighthearted adventure that really captures, you know, poker and the the Western flavor and, you know, on that front kind of thing. It, it, just an all-around good movie. It's a fun little Western comedy adventure to watch. And there's a great cameo with Danny Glover where Glover's robbing a bank and Mel Gibson's there, and they kind of look at each other, and they're like, no, 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 it couldn't be, and they separate ways, and of course, Danny Glover's like, I'm getting too old for this shit, and he takes off, great cameo, anyway, we go through, Maverick basically gets hooked up into a poker tournament, uh, so does Jodie Foster, and he's dealing with all these characters, and he's trying to win the big pot, and turns out it's all fixed. Uh, James Garner's character is the sheriff in it, and he's part of the whole thing. Well, by the end of the movie, we find out that James Garner's character is actually Mel Gibson's character's dad, uh, which is not too surprising, but it, it was pretty good. Uh, I really like this film. I can sit down and watch this about any Sunday and enjoy the hell out of it. So 
That's why it's in the top five. Number three, we have Tombstone. Kurt Russell, Val Kilmer, um, Bill Paxson, I think, and a slew of other great characters or actors in this film. And, you know, the tagline here, Justice is Coming. Of the modern westerns, this is probably one of the best. Absolutely. This came out, no other western could beat it at the time. It was awesome. The OK Corral, the, you know, that gunfight, and just... This is this is the movie that really set Val Kilmer as an utter badass as Doc Holliday, and Kurt Russell just a great performance. You know when he's he's telling him you know you know tell him I'm coming and hell's coming with me. You know and he's just so intense and in there and it's just you can't go wrong. It's a good story. It's a classic story, and they make it utterly bad ass which is why it's number three. Number two goes to Open Range. Great flick. Tagline on the poster here is No Place to Run, No Reason to Hide. Robert Duvall, fantastic in Westerns, especially the older he gets. He's so awesome. And then Kevin Costner, just fantastic in this movie. It's... Basically, they're cattle ranchers, and they're moving across, and they get hooked up in uh, a brawl in a, a little local town, and they basically kill one of their friends, so they're not going to take it, and it's just one of those things where shit just gets thrown out of proportion, and it spirals out of control, and Robert Duvall's character is just, he's not going to put up with it, he's, he's an utter badass, and Kevin Costner's character, also a badass, and they take it, and you get that classic, you know, showdown at the end of the film with the gunfight, and it's probably one of my favorite westerns of all time, and I've been trying to find this on Blu-ray. I don't think it's out on Blu-ray yet, which is a damn shame, but if you haven't seen this movie, you have got to pick it up and give it a watch. This is probably one of Costner and Duvall's best performances, undoubtedly. And number one goes to The Unforgiven. One of Clint Eastwood's best westerns, if not his best. I think, I personally, I'm going to say it is his best western. Morgan Freeman's also in this film and does a great job. And it's just so badass. Basically, there's uh, a whorehouse in this town and this one whore gets cut up. She gets knifed up pretty bad, so they go and hire... Uh, Eastwood and uh, Freeman's characters because they used to do some unsavory things in the past and they wanted to get revenge uh, on what happened or they're looking for justice, their version of justice and so they decided to go, well, uh, things don't go according to plan and they end up killing uh, Morgan Freeman's character and Clint Eastwood gets pissed the fuck off. He goes into town and kills everybody he in he just goes in execution style like just an unbelievable killing machine and just ex executes everybody and tells them you know i'm leaving and if anybody pulls a gun up i'm gonna sh shoot them then i'm gonna go in and shoot their whole family and burn their damn house down and it just it's awesome and definitely the king of all westerns right here, Unforgiven. So that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Uh, look for other videos in this series. Look for other videos I've done. Subscribe. What's your favorite western? Did it not make this list? Add them in the comments. Make a video, and I'll catch you guys later. Again, thanks for watching.